to death of poor people! The Riot Club follows my character, Miles Richards, and Sam Claflin's character, uh, Alistair Ryle, as they are initiated into the Riot Club, um, which is a club that celebrates elitism and hedonism and wealth and excess. Because of who they are and the wealth that they have, they sort of trash these places and, um, and pay everyone off. And I suppose this story is, um, we see the sort of journey that the boys take to get into this club and what that takes and who you need to be. It's based on a few dining societies that are around. I mean, there's many dining societies at Oxford University. Um, and it's basically like a snapshot into a world, well, that one that I didn't know anything about before and one that's quite interesting and very different from most people's lives that I know anyway. So we're at the top university in the world. Yeah. Arguably. And so are 20,000 other people. But there are no more than 10 in the Riot Club, the top ten. If you'd like, I can speak to later. I'll nominate you. The great thing about this movie is that they're all, there's sort of ten villains, but at the same time they're ten victims, you know? They're all kind of a victim of their own privilege. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was an absolute blast, I think, having the opportunity to show my darker side, um, especially as you go on this journey with these ten boys over this one night. I just remember loving the script and thinking that it was, uh, at one point, simultaneously like a, a window into a world that I was completely unaware of, but at the same time just very subtly clever in, in picking out the kind of uh, little social conventions and, uh, and class differences and all that kind of, that like British culture subtlety that kind of you, is just, is humorous because it's so on the nose. In the beginning you can sort of, you can't be blamed for sort of slightly falling for them more than you would expect. And it's like sort of how far will you go with them before you feel like you cannot go any further and you really do drop off their train, as it were. You just you're like, no, I'm... I think in the first, the first half, when you, when you watch the movie, the first half of it, people, people are laughing and the, the, the room is slightly more relaxed. And then as the story goes on, I think that feeling of shock that you've actually sort of been caught up in it too you almost feel as if you're to blame as well and I, I found that when I was watching it I was in hysterics at the beginning and at the end I was not laughing <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Chateau Petrus, nineteen seventy-six. You know, I was like, people, people are actually like this. No, no, this can't be true. But you know, the more people we kind of talk to during the sort of. Um, sort of re research process, the kind of rehearsal process at the beginning of filming, you know, you realise that actually, yeah, no, this is, this is how people live. We interviewed a few boys from the Bullingdon Club. That helped. Um, I remember one of them said that when you go into these restaurants, when you have these dinners, it's like going into Narnia. All the social rules just stop applying. Um, I thought that was interesting. We went to Eton. Um, and it was fascinating. We sat down with an 18-year-old lord, which was quite interesting. Uh, and we learned about this thing called Pop, which is like a, a, a club which they have, which I pretty much, I'd hate to say it, I think it's pretty much just like popular kids nominating other popular kids to be in a special club. And then they, they get special privileges, have their own clubhouse, they can wear, their, wear their, a special waistcoat and tie. What I found from that is that you're kind of breeding elitism into children from a very young age. And I mean, not all, but for a small minority, that is enough of a seed to sort of to, to spawn certain characteristics in people, which I think are sort of explored in this movie. May I say that this is an opportunity to reconsider the sort of person we're approaching. Really make sure they're the best and the brightest. You mean the prettiest? <laughs> I meant fine minds. Kidney, you go. You'll see. Oh my God, that one last year. Wow. Gay Harry gay Potter. Potter. Yeah. Harry Potter is gay. <laughs> Guys, are we seriously going to be the only year that couldn't get 10 members?
It was amazing that we had a brilliantly strong woman conducting us because she was, and she was a fantastic conductor and she knew how to work with every actor individually. She, she knew all our strengths, our weaknesses, our fears, our, you know, everything. So she knew exactly how to handle us all and to kind of conduct, conduct a piece. You really need a, a conductor as a director when you're dealing with 10 people in a scene. She's so wonderful. I mean, it's such an emotionally intelligent, uh, director and also incredibly good at knowing how to speak to us individually as actors because it could have been a nightmare, you know, 10 testosterone-fueled, overly caffeinated boys on set for 16 hours a day. But no, she was wonderful and, uh, yeah, kept us all in check. I adored working with Lona and she had complete control of those boys, which was good. Um, and she was just fantastic, full of ideas and and she really knows when she's seen something, when it's done, it's like, move on, and it's simple and beautiful, and I think that really translates to screen. You know, if she sees you doing something, she's like, oh, I'll add that in, and she wants you to kind of improvise little bits and make it feel as free and natural as possible. Wales, are you? Posh. <laughs> Just normal. You've got quite a posh name. Miles Davis. My parents were listening to Kind of Blue when I was conceived. Good job my parents didn't do that. They'd have named me Gary Barlow. <laughs> <laughs> my relationship with, with uh, Lauren, played by Holiday, was, was, was a sort of odd, it almost felt like a sort of microcosmic little movie in itself. We had these lovely intimate scenes and then to find her in the context of the club during the restaurant scene was, was kind of disturbing because I felt protective over her. And these boys are such wonderful actors um, that they really did have this predatory feeling about them. It's that they're all just a bit too good at being horrendously sleazy and quite scary. And there was just this one point in between scenes when Doug put his hand on my shoulder, and, or in between takes, put his hand on my shoulder and went, are you all right, Holly? Which is the loveliest thing to do in the world. And actually, I was just like, just don't touch me. And just my initial gut reaction <laughs> was like, usually I'd be like, yeah, I'm fine. Um, but I just couldn't, you know, you just need to take yourself out of the situation and then have a breather and a cup of tea before you can go back in it and see the guys for who they are and not the characters for a split second. Holiday Granger is, I feel is like almost the heart of the movie. You know, she is, she takes the audience into this world. And also what she does represent, she represents the world that is so terrifying for these boys. You know, for them, they, they're, they're, they're terrified by the idea of this new world, this new, this new Oxford, you know, these pe people coming in with scholarships and all this stuff. And, and, and they kind of hold themselves away in these rooms and these old libraries and sort of try and forget that this world exists. It's time for you to leave. <laughs> I need your help. Ambulance, please. Something's happened. Could have just been a mistake. People like us don't make mistakes. It's so easy to be seduced, to be told that you're fantastic and elite and that the world is your oyster. Uh, that's pretty seductive um, for anyone. Obviously, the Riot Club is fictional, but there's, you know, you can definitely link it to reality, I think. And that whole world, it's sort of, make, it wakes you up to how, um, how, deep, how deeply that goes, how many people in high places there are who are um, associated with one another and, and what that is, and it's, it's, it's bizarre to me. So, someone asked me the other day, they said, um, you know, do you hope that uh, uh, David Cameron and George Osborne, they, they watch this movie. I was like, well, I hope everyone watches this movie. And, you know, no matter what class you're from, I think everyone can relate to it in some way. There are obviously people who have been associated with, with certain clubs, um, and they're very quick to say, oh, it was a time in our life, we were young. But if they did indeed associate themselves with these values, then I think it's important to talk about and for people to know. So if we can at least make people aware, uh, We've done our job, I think.